We're driven by the search for better. But when it comes to hiring, the best way to search for a candidate isn't to search at all. Don't search, match with Indeed. Indeed is your matching and hiring platform with over 350 million global monthly visitors, according to Indeed data, and a matching engine that helps you find quality candidates fast. Leveraging over 140 million qualifications and preferences every day, Indeed's matching engine is constantly learning from your preferences. Join more than 3.5 million businesses worldwide that use Indeed to hire great talent fast. And listeners of this show will get a $75 sponsored job credit to get your jobs more visibility at Indeed.com slash BlueWire. Just go to Indeed.com slash BlueWire right now and support our show by saying you heard about Indeed on this podcast. Indeed.com slash BlueWire. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire? You need Indeed. Welcome back to the Strangest Mavericks post-game show. I'm Kirk Henderson. This is now officially Mavs Party. I have to find the right overlay so it doesn't say. There we go. Um, I'm Kirk Henderson, editor-in-chief over at MavsMoneyBall.com. I run Pod Maverick with Josh Bow and the crazy cast of characters who enjoy joining us on this show regularly, ranging from uh, our other contributors over at Mavs Moneyball to anybody else that feels like joining the show now uh those of you who are here live on youtube there is a pinned comment in the chat which you can click to join the show it has uh, it is very easy to use you click the link it takes you to another place if you're on your phone if you're on your computer both of those things work and i am happy to talk dallas mavericks basketball with you or if uh there's other things you want to talk about i probably really don't mind that either but i uh, the only thing i i pay attention to these days um is uh dallas mavericks basketball so coming up first is my man brian and then we have mr dang and then we have micah so that's three folks if anybody else wants to come join just click that link and you'll be taken to a waiting room so brian welcome welcome what's going on today my man we got another win how's it going I, you know, I just, another win is always great. It it's, really it's is. so great. It really is. Seven in a row. Seven in a row, right? Yeah. Yeah. Seven, seven in a row. row is a long ass period of time, right? which feels fantastic. Like, and I, it, like, we're going to ignore how it was artificially inflated because of the all-star break. But as far as I'm concerned, the Dallas Mavericks haven't lost in February. That could be true. I've not checked the schedule, but it's, it feels like, it feels good to me. So let's I'm go. I'm going to run with it. Yeah, totally fine. I'm I'm totally fine running with that. I think. Did you see? Um, I think it was Grant Asset. He uh, tweeted that he asked PJ about that win streak, and he was like, "Yeah, I'm not sure if I've been on a seven game win streak." They've won. They 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 lost to Milwaukee. That's the only time they've lost in February. I feel much better about this take now. All right. Yeah. Yeah. No, we've been outstanding in February. Mm. Josh has been great this month. Jaden Hardy has been great this month. Sad to see him get a DMP tonight, especially with. I know. I really, I, it feels so weird to me to be like, why didn't Jaden Hardy play? And yet, why didn't Jaden Hardy play? I mean, we know no X Men. We know that that's going to eat into some of those 10 minutes, but Tim Hell, did yeah, and, and, and the way he did tonight. I, don't know. I, I, don't I know. think they really wanted to see Tim shoot his way out of his funk, and maybe he will. Like, maybe it'll happen at the right time. Well, he funked up the building. That's what he did. He sprayed it all over the place, man. Ain't nobody want to see that. Not for 30 minutes. Look, man, after after about 19, 20 minutes, he's showing you he ain't got it. It's time. Pull the plug. Yeah. Bringing him in the game to close over Josh, I I was irate. I, if we had well, lost he this game, setting up on Booker. That. That's yeah. the problem. I don't mind the missed shots as much as them targeting him on defense. Like, Booker's like, ooh, Tim Hardaway, I'm going to go get free throws. 
Yeah, and there's no way that kid can think like, yeah, Tim is a passable defender. When you see the other team, see him standing in the corner and their eyes get big as dinner plates. Like you, come on, man. And I, I, I genuinely think the NSA, he thinks that Tim is a fine defender. And yeah, no, but we, we don't have to dwell on that. The seven game win streak, uh, 20 and nine. I think that's the record that we have to get to over these last 29 games after the all-star break to really have a chance at uh, getting the five seed and holding it, even creeping up into the four seed. We probably would have to win some more games. And less importantly, but also still importantly, if we want Luca to like genuinely creep into, okay, this guy could actually be the MVP. Ooh. That's kind of where we've got to be. We, we've got to win any of these last 29 Ryan. games. Ryan. You're doing yes. the thing that we need to do more of. I have this one fan who always yells at me on my Twitter where he's like, you need to be more of a propaganda machine. And my problem is I just, I'm too big of an asshole to be able to be propaganda consistently because I, I just am, am, am a little bit of a contrarian. But I think if the Mavericks creep up into the four seed, I do not see how a right-minded person that watches the game of basketball. See, I can't even do this. I I want Luca to be in that argument. I still think Shai's has has a little bit of a better argument, but it, it I I would love to have it. I think is let the me way be I, the I, NBA I, Yang brother. Let I, I can step in. I can do this for you. See, I just, we, yeah, get, but, we get up and grab the fourth seed, and OKC doesn't finish one when they okay. have all season long, and all of their players healthy all season long, and they made a trade at the deadline, too, to address their biggest weakness, which is Josh Giddy in the clutch, where you know mm. teams are going to target him, and you know teams are going to help off him defensively. They target- Gordon Hayward is supposedly supposed to fix that. Right, right. And so, so what they, you know, instead of bringing in more youth to to help combat Josh Giddy, uh, they brought in a very old man to, to play some basketball who hasn't played much ball in the year 2024. A very old, very well known as like a stout Iron Man kind of guy, this Gordon Hayward, right? Uh, right, really will so, last. Like, knock the on whole, wood. I want him to yeah, stay healthy. He'll last the whole postseason. Certainly, certainly will. So they do that. They make these moves to shore up one of their weaknesses. They didn't shore up that other weakness that we exploited because we beat they ass when we saw them right after the deadline with one of our centers healthy. And I'll back up at that. So if y'all got all this going for y'all, y'all have had the narrative going all year long. Shay, da 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 da. His point differential, even though the point differential is going to look like that when you don't have a competent playmaker coming off the bench where we do, because we have the Kyrie with bench units. We had the Dante Exum with bench unit lineup. So we had a point guard organizing the team, even if it didn't look great all the time. We had that. So I feel like that's a big difference in like Lucas' point differential is on off numbers and Shay's. But whatever, that's to the side. You've had all of that going for you all year long. If you don't finish with the one seed, it's over. I don't care. And guess what? If the you want to be in real contention for it next year, oh yeah. Mm-hmm. And if you want to be in real contention for it next year, you better not lose in the first round. Don't lose in the first round, especially not the. I like this argument. Now, now, now to pivot away from from um, facts and or propaganda, depending on your mm-hmm. point of view. Reggie Miller said something that made me want to put my <laughs> foot. Reggie Miller said a lot of things that made me want to put my foot through my television. But one thing that I don't. Like, all right, so I am pretty regularly critical of Kid because I just get frustrated. But one of the things I thought was absolutely insane that he said was, well, Jason Kidd, it it was like in the second quarter, maybe it's the end of the first quarter when Luka got his first, his second foul and Kyrie came back in. And he Mm -hmm. goes, Jason Kidd has just recently started making sure that one of Kyrie or Luka is on the floor at all times. And I remember thinking, what? That ain't fucking true. They've been doing that. Made sure of that the whole year. Like that's kind of if they're out there with either one of those guys, then that's like a like a you know, uh, the, like the entire town from The Simpsons marching, like everybody with pitchforks. Like he's done some things that have made me mad. He's never done anything like that, right? No, that's that's absurd from Reggie. But that's okay. not even my favorite Reggie thing that he did tonight. That I what did he do? What else did he do? I ended up tweeting about it. I think you tweeted about it too in the moment, uh, where obviously. Luca got mauled on back-to-back plays mm. uh, right before he ends up getting the tech. You know, he he throws the ball to the ref. Uh, I guess if you want to say he put some heat on it, he didn't really, but whatever. Threw it, threw it to the ref. The ref caught it. 
lean back, flinched, and T, right? Uh, Jason Kidd, you know, hands in pockets, whatever. And <laughs> it, it's just funny that that turned into, uh, Reggie turned into like Judd Apatow. He could have killed him. And meanwhile, what was that that happened on the other end? I think, oh, yeah. And then Grace and Allen, uh, open hand palm strike Luca in the face. And he was like, there's a little bit of flopping going on here. I'm like, what? Is that, how is it, use your eyes. How is that what you saw in both of these instances? Luca, like the one that was reviewed at the end where Luca basically pulled the, the coolest WWE flop I've ever seen him pull where he hit himself with his own hand. He, wait, no, 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 no. Or a different that one. That was Grayson's hand. I, no, 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 the one with Grayson. One that was reviewed. Eyes. Yeah, the lariat, man. Right there. That was Luca sold that thing. He oh sold it, but he goodness. got hit. Like, sure, there was. I'm, I'm not even saying Reggie was lying, saying that's flopping there. But like, <laughs> you gonna get, you gonna give him that he could have killed him for passing the ref the ball, and then yeah, okay. Grayson Allen came through with the with the WWE uh, spinning lariat right to the face. Like, and Luca sold it, but come on, man. That's what I mean, because he clearly hit Luca in the face, but Luca sold it. That's what. Sure, I mean, that's what you're funny. supposed to do. Like that, uh, that uh, the rules incentivize you to sell it. Sure. If it keeps tricking the refs, keep doing it. Sure. 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 No, no, no. You're right, man. You're right. What else you got for us? Uh, just happiness, man. We're winning. The team is good. My heart is full. We are tall and normal size. We're not even normal size. We're tall now. That, tall. That's, that's such a weird feeling. We are tall. We are long. We are like beefy with like PJ on the wing and like gaff in the gaff in the paint. Oh, one last thing, and I think I saw you tweet about this too. The Gafford block that was reversed and wasn't called a block and turned out to be a foul, that was real. No buckets in my paint, and I appreciated that. I like, understand why people are like, we can't call him the landlord because reasons. But yeah, like, yeah, no. Like, what do we – like, that we was – get to work. That was some get out of my house type yeah, thing. Yeah, he was, he was doing the Lord's work. And, like, and I, I, again, kid criticism earlier aside with the specific thing, I mm-hmm. like the challenge because there's something about watching watching that block over and over again. I would be, and I don't know this, but I would wonder how hard he attacked the paint the rest of the game. I was just about to say that. I didn't see him go aggressively to the rim at all after that. And also, watching the other team's best player fall on the ground like a, I'm going to restrain myself, fall on the ground uh, like a wimp over and over and over and over and over at home is very, 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 very funny and it very is. good for team morale. No, so it's, yeah, I'll give Craig, I'll give him, I'll give kid credit for that, but man, just step in here and take a, a check for Luke. And I swear to God, a lot of these complaints about you will go away. We won't even notice all the dumb stuff that you're doing with like the substitutions mid game. Right. Just the one. But, yeah. Well, there's just, a, you know, uh, just step for, in and for, take for every ying, there's a yang. And, and so that kind of decision alone in hindsight, now that we know that the Mavericks won, make me feel a lot better about the way that game went. And we're going to, mm-hmm. we're going to, we're going to say because the Mavericks won that the work, the decision to call, because they knew like they, like when you, there's no verticality yeah. involved there. Like when you're coming at somebody in the air, the only way they would say it's like, because when I get, and I made the point where I was like, if, if that's a, if that's a foul and it is, then yeah, Luka defenders ward off Luka all the time in midair. Yeah. Right, exactly. Like Luka everybody gets, gets allowed to ward off and like protect their space when someone is charging at them and they're protecting the rim. That happens all the time. It happens like 50 times a game. And so there's no way they were gonna, there's no way they were gonna call that. There's no way they were gonna call that if anybody else had driven the ball. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for uh kicking us off. We'll talk soon, okay? Hell yeah. Have a good all one. All right. All right, coming up next is my man Doe. What's going on, brother? Hey, brother. Long time no talk to you. You look good. How are you feeling these days? Uh, Dallas is a little rough, but I'm getting used to it. Getting good, used good. to it. Good, good. Good to talk to you. What are you thinking tonight? Man, I am so cautiously optimistic right now. I'm kind of scared to feel how giggling no. I am with these no. two guys. No. You, know? you have to enjoy this. Oh, my God. After you two years to. of pain. Pain. Mm. Look, we had a great run in the Western Conference Finals. And if there's one thing that, that that thing reminded me of is that joy in this game is really, really fleeting if you let it. So you have to lean in on these times where it's great and say it's fun. Because this is fun. It's unbelievably fun. The only person who could ruin this is our boy Kid. You know, no, I'm hard on him, but you know what? They won, so I think we move. On. We move. 
I, I, I right. complain about a couple of things. People disagree with me. Everybody's allowed to disagree. I just, I don't, you know, I will never stand for a coach in my entire life. Like I, I re, my first interaction on the internet was a website called fireavery.com because I hated Avery Johnson so much. You know why? Because the Mavericks traded for Jason Kidd and the first game we had Jason Kidd, he against the Spurs, Avery pulled his ass out during clutch time because he said Jason Kidd didn't know the playbook. I was going to lose my mind. This was what 2008 so i was a young man 24 and and i just like that was my first time where i got online and i found a website because i remember going to google and typing in fire avery johnson and i found <laughs> fireavery.com that started all this so you know what it, it's it's <laughs> and it all circles back to jason kidd <laughs> but anyway the circle of life don't you love it that's right <laughs> But uh, it's it's crazy. There's a lot of elements of this team that I see from the championship team. And P.J. Washington, you know who he reminds me of? Tell me. Sean Marion without the ugly shot. I, his shot's kind of ugly. <laughs> like, but he like, did a I, great I job on Durant. Like, sometimes it just goes like, it's like, it's like watching the Bills kicker with a wide right, wide left. Right. What's happening? Right. But he played great D, I think, tonight against Durant. You know, he handled the switches really well, you know, and then he jumped on the double teams when necessary and he didn't overcommit, you know, so it was really nice to see. We have four guys on the floor most of the time that can dribble. And that's, that's an beautiful. achievement. That is a beautiful thing. You know, that is miraculous. I mean, we used to only have one with Luca, <laughs> you know. And what about and Frank, like, man? You forgot oh, about Frank. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> Who doesn't like a flying Frenchman, right? That's right. But uh, I'm I'm cautiously optimistic. You know, I'm I'm trying not to be overly optimistic, but sure. I'll take it. I'll take it. You know, this is this is unbelievable. This is euphoric. You know, yeah. I'm just we worried about injuries. Games ahead. We got a lot of fun games. This Cleveland game is going to be a bear. This Boston game is going to be a bear. They play Miami in March. There's a lot of national TV games for these Mavericks down the stretch, and I cannot wait. Well, hopefully we'll see primetime Luca because he seems like he gets up for these primetime games. That's right, man. That's right. Yeah. We got anything else for us? No, sir. Just glad right. to, to, to hear you back on the air. It's been a while since we have a Mads party. That's right. Well, I mean, just yeah, I should have done. I was I was on a work trip, and I should have done more, but I just I didn't have the juice. So, no, all right, we'll talk soon then. All right, it's all good. Thanks a lot. I appreciate the work that you do at Mavs uh, Mavs Moneyball. Thanks, Thank guys. you so much. Appreciate it. Talk soon. All right. uh, Captain Crunchy, I'm not going to say the last part of his name, says that Sean Marion has the Beyblade release and let it rip, and I find that hilarious because I know what Beyblades are because I have to to play with them with my child from time to time. All right, we got three callers remaining. I got to go in order of the time they hopped in the room. We got Micah, we got Brandon, and then we have Roger Staubach. Oh, we got Karam joining too. So we're going to fly through some people, and then I'm going to post this and go to bed. Um, Micah, what's happening, friendo? <laughs> Clark, what's going on, man? Um, yeah, it's been a hell of a week, so I really needed this. Yeah, I, I had a real tough day the other day. My dog got out um, when I was about to go to work. Killed one, killed one of my neighbor's dogs. Oh, hit my neighbor. God. So he got taken to the pound. I don't know what I'm going to deal with yeah. outside of that, but at the end of the day, the toughest... Yeah, at the end of the day, even with whatever comes legally or civilly um more than all i miss my dog it's just like yeah i like i catch myself looking for him and then forgetting that he's not here and then it's like yeah. i'm sorry to hear that, but Mike, yeah. i'm glad the mavericks gave um you yeah life happens um but yeah um that was a great game yeah yeah katie was in pjl it is real. Like, um, we just need to have this discussion about this guy, what he has been able to do as just a long defender. And um, I just feel like he's excited that he actually gets to show that part of his game on a team that's trying to win. So it's funny. And you can see. I, I cannot act like I knew a darn thing about P.J. Washington before he played for the Mavericks, and I'm not even going to try. 
And when my friend is Todd Franco, formerly of Mavs Moneyball, now of D Magazine, was very skittish on him as a defensive player that influenced my thought process because I respect Frank, uh, I, I respect his talk. But Josh Bo uh, was, was, you know, another person I obviously respect because I, I work with them, was very kind of just into the concept. And when two of the people whose opinions I, I really kind of appreciate the most just in day to day in my life were like, this guy has something. I'm really glad that it worked out because how many we've just seen so many things not work for the Luca era Mavs and damn it. If we weren't due, but look, Kirk, here's the thing. Like a lot of people forget about it because of how bad they were offensively. Um, yeah. Charlotte has seven was seventh in defensive ranking last year. Really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. More um, as long as Mark Williams and um, P, like PJ, yeah, yeah. PJ next to Mark Williams was locking stuff up. I I thought it was funny, like um, a PJ video from from when they beat uh, they beat the Celtics last year, right after that video that Jason Tatum made. And he's coming out the tunnel. Not bad for a Monday night on League Pass. <laughs> That's right. That's right. So yeah, like it's it's fun. It's just like it's. I, I love how the new players are in, like embracing the rivalry. Like it's just because this. Like if we're being honest, this is the only real rivalry. Like a true as far as like these teams do not like each other, and it's a. Straight out, straight up battle every time they face off. Yeah, like that's I, I would say the I would say the cl- the closest thing that the that the Mavericks have past that is maybe the Timberwolves. Um, I think there's a little bit of just feistiness there because it's a Styles make fights kind of matchup. But the Wool, the, the right. Suns and the Mavericks are definitely an old school. And when I said, God, I, I nearly said like an old school mid 2000s. What a gross sentence, mid 2000s, being old school. Um, stop it, Kurt. Yeah. Kurt, yeah. stop. <laughs> yeah. That's right. I, I, was in, I was in the military at that time. Stop it. <laughs> right. My, Michael, Michael Luntz in the, in the Twitter comments asks if you're drunk. And, and no, he's not drunk. He's country. Okay, Micah is country, and and we we support country. I am East. I am East Texan through and through. <laughs> All right, what else you got for us? <laughs> um, last th- just last thing. Um, as as a closing thing. Um, as an East Texan, I just want to say somebody from my area is the best quarterback in the league. Feel good. Let's about just you. end it with that. Feel good about this, Patrick Mahomes feller. Think he's going to make it in the NFL. So, anyway, Michael, no, that Michael says his apologies. No, it was too funny. I love that comment. That's why we have comments. This is the best part. Michael, we'll talk with you soon. All right, man. All right, man. Have a good night, Kirk. You too. We're driven by the search for better. But when it comes to hiring, the best way to search for a candidate isn't to search at all. Don't search, match with Indeed. Indeed is your matching and hiring platform with over 350 million global monthly visitors, according to Indeed data, and a matching engine that helps you find quality candidates fast. Leveraging over 140 million qualifications and preferences every day, Indeed's matching engine is constantly learning from your preferences. Join more than 3.5 million businesses worldwide that use Indeed to hire great talent fast. And listeners of this show will get a $75 sponsored job credit to get your jobs more visibility at Indeed.com slash BlueWire. Just go to Indeed.com slash BlueWire right now and support our show by saying you heard about Indeed on this podcast. Indeed.com slash BlueWire. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire? You need Indeed. All right, coming up next, my man, Brandom. What's going on, Brandom? Kurt, you, Mike, and I have something in common. Patrick, Patrick Mahomes went to Tech, and I'm from the Panhandle, so. Okay. See, Texas is a big old state. It's, it's a big it's, old state. East Texas to the Panhandle is like 11 hours of driving. Kurt, you could drive from my hometown to, to Houston, and it is it's, it's, it's further than getting from my hometown to Denver. Yes. That's crazy. Man, 
But Kirk, listen, so I feel like, to me, I feel like kids should try to motivate motivate the guys by, you know, pointing out some of the stuff that's been said about them. You know, they've been getting dragged. They've been getting dragged forever, you know, subliminally by ESPN. ESPN oh, my goodness. I mean, though, though Tim Legler has them fourth in his – so we, we – we, Outside of ESPN, most of ESPN, yes, but Timmy Legler, we we support Tim Legler on this show. He he says they're fourth in his uh, what do you call it? Um, teams that he can win the championship. Anyway, I interrupt you. Sorry. Yeah, that's that's crazy. Legs used to drag him a long time ago, but you know, Amino has them. They used to drag him too. But CBS Sports, ESPN, I mean, they just even some of the some of the you know some of the Dallas guys drag him pretty hard on the radio. But, you know, think about this, Kurt. And just the NBA in general, I would say that, you know, the NBA don't believe in them because a lot of these teams are getting flexed in. I was thinking that tonight was a flex game, but it probably wasn't. But think about this. A lot of Cleveland games are getting flexed in. Um, Sacramento, Lakers, all of those teams this year are getting flexed in. And interestingly enough, Memphis games are getting flexed out. Sure. You would think with Luca and Kyrie, they would want to flex those games in. I think there's still a chance for that, man. So I just I'm looking at the schedule right now. Now m- removing NBA TV games, the Mavericks have games uh, nine national TV games uh, out of the next 26. That's pretty good. That's one out of every three. And that's what that's without the NBA TV games. Yes. So I, I I hear what you're saying though because like yeah. so we get these schedule updates pumped to us from the NBA those of us that are some I don't even know how I ended up on some of these email lists right. and so I I think there's still plenty of opportunity as the year goes on with that the NBA likes having that flexibility they want to have those games that matter on their schedule so it's like when the Mavericks I think the rescheduled Golden State Warriors game is sometime in April like that's going to be a national TV game it, it, I just I firmly believe that the games like the, the- you know, like you were saying, like the Minnesota games, Dallas games, the Phoenix and and Dallas games. I would flex those in because it seems like the the the, the NBA they they put certain teams on a pedestal. And now that Cleveland is like the the hot team, Cleveland, Boston, the, it's the regulars. Even though the Lakers aren't the best team, Cleveland, Boston, the Lakers. Right. You know, a lot of these teams are getting flexed in. They're getting a lot of national coverage, but that seven game win streak isn't a joke. No. And, they're playing. They're playing good basketball. They're still the best. You know, still the best third quarter team in the league. Low. You know, low. Low. That's uh, right. Turnover rate. They're a good team. And you know, kid. To me, I feel like that should be a talking point. Like, hey guys, they're counting us out. You know, kind of look at what Kuzma said. Look at what you know. Then what he said. And sure. you know, let's let's go prove these guys wrong. But. To me, he's just so passive. And I know you don't like barking on kid a lot, but it just seems like he's so passive. No, I was pretty bad on him in the main show uh, that Josh and I did to the point to where I, I chased off like three or four commenters who were like, what's your problem? I'm like, well, I don't know. I can't help myself. That's can't my help problem. Myself. But some, to me, Kirk, something has to be done about those texts because this is literally after All-Star break and he has 12 texts. Yeah. That's a lot. It's a lot. It's That's a lot. A lot. Brandon, thanks so much for joining us. You got anything else? That's it, Kirk. Thank you, man. All right. See you Sunday, I hope. Talk soon. See you. All right. Last. No, actually, we got three people left. Look at me. I can't read. All right. We got uh, Roger Staubach. What's up, Roger? What's up, Kurt? How you doing? Hey. See, see now, for folks, y'all, like, this is why we have – Texas is such a beautiful state because the accent ranges are just as big as the state itself. We got a lot of <laughs> – and Roger here is to help us. So what's going on tonight? What are you thinking? Well, I'm a city boy, so I'm not going to have some of the uh, East Texas accents going. But uh, it's okay. I do have one hat, question. You got, the, you got the cup. So what are you thinking? Well, I got the, I got the yeah, old school Cowboys when they were a team and deserved a sort of bourbon cup. Um, hook them horns. But uh, I, what I'm thinking is, and this is the question I have for you, is – Obviously, if Luca and Kyrie get injured down the stretch, that's catastrophic. Yep. Who who is that other injury that you would consider is the most uh, that leaves us the most vulnerable? I, I I'm personally thinking lively at this point because I just 
he just brings something that um, maybe it's a teenager injury or, or sorry, energy, not injury, but energy that he brings. Um, what, what do you consider? And uh, the, the other question I have is what is your liquor of choice? That's all. So the injury question is a great one. Um, this Dante Exum one just sort of hanging out is a little bit stressful for me because I think he he brings an element to the team that they 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 could also use. Um, but it's got to be one of the two centers because the fact that we can run either one of those guys and we don't have to see Dwight Powell's uh, apparently very handsome face with the sport goggles, I can't put a value on that. You know what I mean? So that that really. That's a good take by you. It's the center one would really worry me. I actually think the Mavericks could survive uh, a 10 game in uh, absence from Luca or Kyrie at this point. I really, I think the team's built that way. Um, the center, I think would almost be more drastic because it, it, when they're small, they're kind of really easy to score on like the paint scoring. So that's for me. And then um, the, the liquor question is a really good one. So, I grew up here in North Texas. I went to Coppell High School. I was a terrible athlete, so I never drank in high school because it made me worse. I go to Pepperdine, which is a small Christian college out in California that has like a dry campus rule. So I never really learned how to drink till I was in my 20s. I didn't really like beer. So I tend to drink like clear liquors. I tend to drink like your vodkas and your rums. And it's not the best. I know I'm a sissy. I had the the real problem. I can't drink Jack. I can't drink whiskey because my dad is a Jack and Coke guy, and he used to drink like the top like fifth or fourth of a Coke can and pour Jack and Coke in that. So when I was eight years old, I took a swig of a Coke can, not realizing there was Jack and Coke in it, and it has been nearly thirty five years, and I still cannot stomach the smell of Jack Daniels. So all whiskey is wasted on me. I feel bad saying that out loud; makes me a bit of a sissy. But what are you gonna do? All right, man. We'll hook them and uh, let's go Mavs. That's right, man. Thanks so much for joining. Hope you come back. All right. <laughs> Do dang in the chat says, what about mad dog? If you look up what MD 2020 actually stands for, it will blow your mind though. I mean, we're old and it is not mad dog. That's just what we call it. All right. Krom's coming up next. Krom, what's going on tonight? How are you? I am doing well. How about you? I am feeling great. What's going on tonight? What are you thinking? Uh, two things. One, <clears throat> excuse me. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can. You sound good. Okay, okay, cool. Um, one thing is, there's a. I don't know how to describe it, but this team feels different, right? Sure. It just feels like a different team, kind of like the twenty two season was it yep. 22 when we went to the western conference finals or yes it was then that was the year where like january 31st tim hardaway gets hurt hurts his foot and then the mavericks proceed to win like seven out of their next 10 games for the entire rest of the year yeah i don't know but but it feels a bit more different than that okay tell like, me why what do you think i feel like just that connection between Luca and Kyrie that you're seeing it happen right now. I think I don't I don't think there's any team outside of the Clippers that worry me now. Ooh. And I just think having PJ Tucker, no, not PJ Tucker, I'm sorry, PJ Washington playing this type of defense. I don't think we've had anyone like that since Sean Marion. I, I, I think that's probably true. Like the Mar Marion was such a special player um, that there's something to that for me. I now Marion was a guy, in my opinion, who is so historically underrated that I think he, he should be in the basketball hall of fame. Yeah. But if in terms of like a guy with tools and very weird what measurements, I, I like the comp just for, for that sake. And, and, you know, the thing that's, makes this team even more dynamic is the fact that P.J. Washington, you don't have to rely on his offense to be successful. His defense is so good as it is right now that you're not really caring about his offense. 
and I'm a big PJ Washington fan. I huh. watch him in college. I watch bits and pieces of him in Charlotte. He's never played this type of defense in Charlotte. Yes. I mean, and that, that goes to show you kind of how basketball teams are constructed to where if you're playing with guys where you fit, you can make a difference in a way that's never been seen before. I mean, this is elite defense. I've never seen this in him, not even in college. He was good in college, but not like this. This yeah. is this is different. And, I mean, Lucas, Hawk, Kyrie. I mean, where was this Kyrie in the beginning of the season? Was I'm okay injury? with that. <laughs> I'm a, I would rather have it now than than not have. I'd rather have it now than get it early and not have it later. Like, you know, I know Buddy Bill wasn't playing, but just seeing Luca and Kyrie go against Booker and Durant, two of the most offensively gifted specimens, sure, and just take their heart out and and make. Durant look human and I mean we were down by 11 and we just we destroyed <laughs> well again oh, Luca Luca hates the Suns so but I don't know I it just feels different for me I don't yeah. I don't know I don't think we're going to win a championship but I mean when did we ever have two big men clog up the paint in a way where players can't even score on us now in the paint right I, there's some, I I like the I like the thought and and you know you just you just reminded me of something because you keep saying something that tickled something in the back of my brain. There was a book that came out 2012 2013 written by the tickets Bob Sturm called This Year Will Be Different, and it's a re it's a revisitation of the Mavs 2010 2011 season, and there's really something to to like, the book is amazing because it just really takes you back to the season in a way that that is hard like reminds you details you probably would have forgotten but this was i i like what you're saying I, I i'm working my way towards it we still got 26 games left but the feeling it's it's great to have a feeling that 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 things are on the upswing can i can i say one more thing sure okay so i think it was i don't know if it was bad Brown Townsend or or um, who's the commentary? Um, Mark uh, Mark Followell? Yeah, I think it was one of them. They tweeted that the last time the Mavericks had a seven win streak was when they won the championship. They went on the last I think 30 games, 7, 10, and 12. Okay. I like we it. have the seven. <laughs> we already have the seven. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm, I'm hyping myself up too much. I mean, I'm just excited. I guess we haven't had a seven win game. What did we have? No seven wins when Brunson. The se- well, year? they won seven games and then Luca died. That was what happened because the sixty game, like the sixty uh, point twenty rebound ten assist game against the Knicks, like that was where. Things just went sideways after that. I'm pretty sure that was seven games, not six. So it's like, this is great. This is really yeah. something. And um, I mean, I think we can win the next four. Yeah. Yeah. I think we can. I think we'll, I, I think something special is happening. Yeah. I, I like the feeling. It's good to be swinging up at the right time, Krom. This is fun. Yes, sir. This, fingers crossed everyone is healthy. And, and oh, and I think, you know, it makes it even more scarier when Dante comes back. Now you have that third ball handler. And before Dante got injured, he was a pivotal. You could play five guys. Who starting, could yeah. You could play PJ like small ball five if yeah. you wanted to and play five dudes who could, who could dribble. I don't think they do it, but he's pretty amazing. With so. kid, you never know. Yeah, that's right. All right, man. Talk All right, soon. Thank you. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, Krishna, welcome to the show. What's up, dude? You there? Let's see if Krishna can hear us. Like I can hear you. It doesn't show you as muted. All right, can you hear me? There we go. What's up, man? Good. How are you? I'm uh, I'm tired, but uh, not that tired because it's not one in the morning. We're having a good time. That's good. Yeah, prefer this over you know. Oh my God, I can't imagine if this this had been a loss. But um, God, like it, if it doesn't feel like it's been that long since the Mass have played basketball. Obviously, before tonight, but 
really has been a week, and it's good that they kept the momentum up from the six game win streak. And I, I get all the I don't want to say criticism, but you know, all the the points around, yeah, these were not good teams. But again, if we compare this team to last season, last season this team could not even beat bad teams, much yeah. less beat the good teams and which they did on occasion. And I think it's just a huge positive that this team has kind of come around and it went through that very tough stretch in January, honestly, which was just brutal in terms of not just injuries, but who you were playing and it's gotten out of it for the better. And the team has just looked a lot better. Like it's been these past three games. I think people have probably mentioned at this point, you know, Tim has not been shooting the three ball. Well, even the team as a whole isn't really shooting the three ball the same way they had been at most of the point through the season. But, you know, you're scoring far more in the paint. Like the scoring diversity is just way better. And oddly enough, you can rely on your defense in a way that I just don't think this team has ever been able to do. Even that 22 team, which we talk about their defense all the time, I don't think it was that they relied on their defense. It's that they could play defense when they needed to. Whereas this team has, I think, a little bit more as a higher side playing defense and pj washington has been that like i i know people uh, maybe more casual fans will look at pj washington's like offensive numbers because those are the things that are always yep. going to be easy to get from a stat sheet that's right but his defense has been awesome for this team so far like being a being like a wing point of attack defender essentially and he's been really good in that role has been just crucial because even like even in later on in the game when Luca is getting hunted or whatever, you know the teams can't do that the whole time. Like I think there's an over exaggeration with, oh, like teams are going to hunt Luca and Kyrie. Like yeah, they're going to do it. I think in moments and spots, but no team has that many players that they're going to do it for 48 minutes in a row. No, it's just no. Not and the, this Mavericks team is built for both speed and power. To where I think if you were to play a grinded out basketball game where you're trying to to wear those two down, it's an interesting strategy. It could work. I also think those two could go down and help orchestrate an offense that can connect on wide open threes the way the Mavericks started the third quarter. There's just a lot of different options these Mavericks can do to crush teams. I'm looking forward to it. It really is. It is. It's just a diversity of styles, right? Like I think someone mentioned this team as like the Denver of last year. I think the difference with the Denver of last year is you have a much better second star than Jamal. I think Jamal Murray is awesome in the playoffs. Sure. But I think you have a much better star in in Kyrie. Um, now, of course, we have to see it in the playoffs. But I, I trust Luka, and I, to some extent, I trust Kyrie. It's been rough for him the past few playoffs. But I also think it's because Kyrie on those other teams has been asked to do a lot more than he has here. And well. I also – yeah, I mean, he's had some bad injury luck. Like when Giannis stepped on his foot, that was rough. That team, I think that's, I think that Nets team could have gone to the finals. Um, I mean, they're, they yeah. still molly whopped that Bucks team after the Kyrie injury. It was just yep. like, yep, they were they were. Cool. But I think the difference between this team and that team is the depth on this team is a lot better than and anything those Nets teams really had. And I, honestly, this Mavs team has depth that I just don't think we've seen in a while. And you know, there's been some talk about like, oh, do the Mavs still need this, need that? I I think now the Mavs are in a much better position where kind of no matter, almost no matter what happens, obviously you want to make the playoffs still, but almost no matter what happens, you feel pretty good about sitting still this offseason. You know, obviously making marginal moves like you hope they keep Derek Jones Jr. or, you know, get a like for like replacement, but obviously that's for later. But this is a good win. This is a really good win. Like, great we're win. We're outscoring teams in the paint. We're out rebounding teams. And we're in the position where other teams did to us, where it felt like we only could play small ball. And so other teams would be like, okay, we're just going to play a center. Like you're just not going to be able to deal with it. And now this team has the ability to fight like styles with styles, right? It felt like beforehand the Mavs were like fire. And so they had to just continuously put fire just to win games. Yeah. And now it's like, okay, well, if we have to fight fire, we have water. It's like, if we have to fight water, we have whatever. Yeah, like, they they're, they're, they have more than just the ability to play hard. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, I think about it, like, there was this missed outlet pass, but, you know, Luca had an outlet pass to, like, 
lively and lively, you know, he, he got fouled on it, but it's like that kind of stuff. Like we just wouldn't have seen that last season at all. And the fact that this team can play well in the half court, like I trust this team to play in the half court. I trust this team to play a transition game. And now I trust their defense a lot more than I have. It's kind of even crazy to imagine that. And it's weird that this is still one season. Like this is a very different team, even from the beginning of the season or even the preseason Kirk, like I was, I was reading on Twitter. It's like so funny to think after we lost to the Timberwolves, we all thought like this was, this was over and, and uh, yeah, this is great. It's good stuff, man. Really, really good. Well, thanks for take, carrying us out of here. We'll talk soon. All right. Yeah, absolutely. Take care, Kirk. All right. We'll be back Sunday. I don't know if it'll be a late game. Like, so the Mavericks play at four central time, uh, which means hopefully some Slovenian fans will get to see the game live without having to stay up super, super light. Um, I'm not sure when Josh and I will go live. So he and I both have small children. Um, is you know, 630 to 7 for me is when I start to put the infant down. We'll see. Um, I like doing these shows as quick as I can because I, that's when I really have um, – that's when I really kind of am still going. So, all right, been a great 90 minutes. Thanks so much for hanging out with me. If you could do us a favor, leave comments on all these shows, uh, you know, like the stream, subscribe to the show. We're getting very close to 2,500. You know, everybody likes uh, random milestones, things like that. This has been a great time. This has been Kirk Henderson of Pod Maverick and Mavs Moneyball. We will talk to you soon. Go Mavs. Grab your VIP pass. We're delving into the secretive world of Formula One. Formula One. Behind the scenes with two of the sport's biggest names, Mercedes and Williams. This is not coal mining. This is Formula One motor racing. As they build their new cars. We want to be so much further ahead. We are in permanent racing mode. And face shocking headlines. Here's Lewis Hamilton moving away from Mercedes. I'm Joseph Fiennes and this is F1. Back at base. Listen wherever you get your podcasts.